Welcome to the next lesson in our course for the Basic Beginners FreeCAD for FreeCAD version 1. This is a revised version of the original lesson as the first few videos were recorded using a pre-release known as 0.22. The updated version brings the lesson in line with the current release and also adds some additional content as well. This lesson is about learning how to navigate views and panels in FreeCAD using the keyboard, mouse or touchpad to move in 3D space and also we will be exploring selections. Let's come up, click view and click on full screen. We're going to start by creating a new document in FreeCAD. We'll either use file new or click on the new icon. Let's use the standard toolbar to change our workbench to the part workbench. We're going to be primarily using part design throughout this course and the choice for this will be explained in our next lesson. We have the standard toolbar running along the top, but we also notice that we have other toolbars here. These are for the part workbench. And if I hover over this divider just here, leave my mouse for a couple of seconds, I can see it saying solids. If I change the workbench to the surface workbench, we see we have a different toolbar here, but these have stayed the same. Let's go back to the part. And if you've got the same, hover over the divider, click and hold and drag the toolbar down. So it creates a new toolbar underneath. Repeat this with the others until we have all the part workbench toolbars in one row. We'll start by creating a simple cube. We can select it from the toolbar or we can come out to part primitives and click on cube. The tools on the toolbar can be placed wherever you want, but the drop down menu always stays the same. Throughout this course, you'll see me point to the icon and also show it in the menu. The cube has been added to both the 3D view and the tree view. You'll be using both extensively. The cube is positioned by an X, Y, and Z coordinate. We can see that in the bottom right hand corner here. This is the global coordinate system. The coordinates start at an origin point, and we can see that if we come up to view and toggle axis cross. I'm going to select the cube and right click and toggle the transparency so we can see through it. This makes it easier to see the point of origin, which sits here. You note that the axis are in different colors. X is in red, Y is in green, and Z is in blue. This is the same across all CAD packages and 3D programs. We remember X, Y, Z is in alphabetical order and red, green, blue, in other words, RGB, is the same as color systems like an RGB monitor or an LED. You also see this axis repeat on the navigation cube in the top right hand corner. The central space in 3D, the origin, is the global origin point located at X0, Y0, Z0. We're going to take the cube and right click the cube and transform. Notice that I've done it from the tree view. I can also do it by clicking on the cube in the 3D view and right click and transform. A helper will appear and we can move it along the different axis. I've moved it away from the origin point. This is known as an offset. If I hit OK and click on the cube in the tree view, I can come down to the data tab. This holds the properties of the object we selected. There is also a view tab. This holds visual data such as color information and line and point thicknesses. We can see the transparency has changed. So if I come in, click on the object, right click and toggle transparency, the transparency is set back to zero. Most properties you see in here can be changed. If it can't be, the field will be grayed and it's in read only. We've just changed the offset from the origin. If we look at the placement and the position, we see we have three along the X, three along the Y, and zero along the Z. We can open this out and edit the individual axes. If you haven't got enough space, then we can come over to the splitter and pull this window out. And the same in here. There's a splitter between the property name and the property field. 
which we can use and pull this out. So we have an X of three and a Y of three. We can change these. So I can set my X to zero and my Y back to zero, returning the cube to the origin point. You'll notice that we can enter both positive and negative numbers to position the cube. Another way to enter these numbers is by using the up and down arrows. And we can move that back and forth using those. The same if we use the up arrow and down arrow on the keyboard. This increments it by one across the chosen axis. Also on the keyboard, we can use page up to increment it by 10. And again for another 10 and page down to bring it the other way. I'm going to position this away from the point of origin. Let's add another object. I'm going to click to unselect the cube and then select the sphere. The sphere has been added to the screen. Now, if we right click on the sphere, we haven't actually selected it. Let's click off, select the sphere first, and then right click and click on transform. Notice the transform is in the center of the sphere. Let's cancel that and do the same with the cube. Click, then right click and transform. We can see that the handler is at the corner. So the origin of the sphere is in the center and the origin of the cube is at the corner. I'm going to click on the sphere, right click and toggle transparency. And you can see the origins match. Let's click on the sphere, right click and transform and move this out of the way. And click OK. Remember, we can move it with positioning if we want to be more accurate. We see that both objects appear in the tree view. If we hover over the objects, they get highlighted. This pre-selection helps us identify where the object is in 3D space. On the left hand side, we see a little eye icon. If I click that, it hides the object from view. If I click it again, it's brought it back. So it toggles between visibilities. We can do the same by pressing the space bar on the keyboard and again to bring it back whilst it's still selected. Don't worry, the course will keep shortcut keys to a minimum. Most of the ones you need will be covered in this lesson. Navigating the 3D view, we need to understand the concept of pan, zoom and rotate. To do this, we first need to choose a navigation type. And this appears in the bottom right hand corner here. We can see at the moment it's saying CAD. Yours might be different and have a different option selected. If we click on the drop down, we see we have a number of options in here. There are some presets that copy common programs such as Blender, Maya, and Tinkercad, if you already use those programs. I'm going to be using the touchpad. This is my preferred navigation style because it allows me the flexibility of using both mouse and touchpad without changing any settings. We can see what buttons it uses by hovering over the navigation style and leaving the mouse for a couple of seconds. A pop-up will appear and it shows both the mouse and keyboard buttons that are used for select, zoom, rotate and pan. Select we've already covered, it's just the left mouse button. Let's look at zoom. I'm using the mouse at the moment. I see this is the mouse wheel. So I can use the mouse wheel to zoom out and zoom in. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, we have this dimension here. So this is the dimension of the 3D view. If I hover over the cube and zoom in, you can see the dimensions are lowering and it's beginning to match the dimensions of the cube. At any time, I can hit the home key on the keyboard to go back to the default view. This is handy if you become disorientated in 3D space and you want to return back to the default view. When using the zoom, you'll zoom into the mouse pointer. If we hover over an object, it pre-selects and it will zoom in to that pre-selection. And that includes the elements as well. So this edge here is pre-selected. We can zoom into that. Or we can be more accurate and hover over a vertex and zoom into that vertex. Let's have a look at rotate. 
With this setup, we have an option. We can either use the Alt or Shift. I'm going to use the Alt. So holding Alt down on the keyboard and we can move the mouse. Notice the pink sphere. And this is the point of rotation. If I let go of the Alt key, we're now out of rotation mode. Pre-selection is handy when rotating. So I can hover over this vertex, hold down Alt and rotate around that vertex. Or hover over the face and rotate around the face. Let go of the Alt and come back down. And let's look at Pan. With Pan, we use the Shift and move the mouse button. And this pans the 3D view from left to right. Note, we're not moving the objects. And you can see that with the axis cross. I'm just going to drag this back. And you can see the objects haven't moved by looking at the position. Now, if you're from other 3D packages, we have some customization in the edit preferences. And if we look at the display, and look at navigation, we have a number of preferences within. So we can configure it to be more like the 3D packages that we're used to. I'm not going to change any of these settings. I'm just going to hit cancel. We can also navigate using the navigation cube in the top right hand corner. So I can click on the face, bring this round to the right view and use the arrows to move the views around. I can also use the corners to get an angle for you between say right and rear. Remember at any time we can hit the home key to bring us back to the default view. Now, if you haven't selected anything in the properties, we can use the keyboard to change our views. And these are shown in the standard toolbar. If we drop this icon down, we can see we have naught to six of the different views. So we can select it from this drop down right view, or we can use 0 to 6 to change our views. Sometimes you may change your view by accident, and this can happen from selecting, say, a read-only field in our properties, and then typing in a number. As we type, FreeCAD will think we're using the shortcut keys, as the field is disabled because it's read-only. Just watch out for that. Let's say we zoomed out the view. So we can't see our objects. How do we get back? Nothing is selected in the tree view at the moment. So we click on some blank space. And at the top in the stand toolbar, we have this icon here, which is the fit all. If I click that, this fits all our objects into the 3D view. I can select say the sphere and use the fit selection. And it will just fit the sphere into the view. As we can see, the cube isn't in view. I select the cube. I use the fit selection now, and we can now see the cube. When using 3D software, we have the concepts of multi-selection. At the moment, the cube is selected. If I now hold down the control key and select the sphere, these two are both selected. If I use the fit selection now, I fit to the selected objects. Just going to hold down the Alt key and bring this around and hover over an edge. I can click this edge to select it. I now can hold down the control key, keeping it held down. I can select the other edge. I can release the control key and use the Alt key and bring this around whilst those edges are still selected. If I've released the Alt key, hold down the control key again, I can now select another edge. Using the control key again, if I select an edge that's already selected, I can remove it from the selection. We'll be using control selections ostensibly throughout our course. There's also the shift select as well. Make sure nothing's selected. You can select some space and that cancels our selection. And I'm going to add a tube and hit OK. So if I wanted to select the cube and the tube, I'll select the cube from the tree view, then control select the tube. The same from the 3D view. If I want to select all three, I don't need to select the cube, then hold down the control and select the other three. I can select the cube, 
and hold down the shift and select the tube. This selects everything between. If I press the space bar, I hide everything. So I've applied that operation to the selected. Press the space bar again. Because they've been selected, that brings them back. Remember, selecting anywhere in 3D space clears or cancels the selection. So from our last two lessons, we've learned how to manipulate the UI, move tabs, move panels, navigate around the 3D view, and understand selection. In our next video, we'll learn the difference between the part and part design, and from there, we'll start modeling in FreeCAD. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.